Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of my Hero Priority series. After what seems like a lifetime, I am finally back with this series with my tank analysis. I know it seemed like it's been forever since I've released one of these, but uh, I went back and looked at the published dates, and it has only been about four weeks since I've uh, released the he healer one. Um, but I guess when you're used to seeing a video per day, it might seem like forever as far as uh, when these are released. So first things first as far as tanks go um, there was a number of things that I considered as far as what makes a tank tanky and basically epitomizes the role so in order to start out I looked outside of the realm of dungeon boss to basically say what is it about a tank uh, as far as uh, role-playing games what makes a tank a tank and uh, I took that to heart in terms of uh, analysis um, after that uh, I also considered a lot of the um, traits within the game itself, um, some things that are only in Dungeon Boss and not other games. Um, now as far as uh, assessing these things, there's a little bit of subjectiveness on my part, so not everything is going to be exactly what you may think it is. I tried to be as fair as possible with uh, the point system that I use in terms of what I felt was most important for what I was categorizing, what I was ranking. Um, much like other ones, the way the ranking is going is it is an aggregate total of individual rankings. Those will accumulate points. The ones with the highest rank um, or the best rank will be the best ones overall. So essentially you're looking to get uh, the number one rank in various categories. And so your lowest overall score is going to be the best person overall. Um, they are based off of just one by one by one ranking. So when there are ties at a particular rank, I did not drop the other ones down multiple points. Uh, by keeping that uh, system uh, pretty much uh, level like that, uh, I kept the points a little bit closer together. We didn't see any real huge outliers um, that kind of kept the, the cluster a little bit better. So with that said, uh, let's talk about a little bit what I uh, analyze as far as ta uh, tanks go. So I stuck with the core four skills as far as uh, Dungeon Boss is concerned. Attack, defense, skill, and health. Um, I also looked at resistances um, because uh, the main thing about tank is their ability to soak damage, mitigate damage, and ultimately have a high health pool and just take less damage all, uh, overall. So similar to defense, I considered resistances as well. That was kind of an interesting stat. I'll talk about that one later. And then some of the other uh, um, Dungeon Boss specific ones, uh, for example, uh, availability um, of tokens. So basically that's more of a priority aspect. Um, the ascension costs. Um, I didn't really look at epics too much uh, because uh, Igarok is the only epic. Um, I looked at things like dedicated taunts crowd control, um, support uh, abilities and traits, uh, and then energy cost, and then ultimately speed. So um, without further ado, let's uh, start out like we did with uh, pretty much all the other ones, and that's going to be our initial assessment. So what I used for initial assessment was just my normal playing of the game. So when I play Dungeon Boss and I'm looking for a tank to run a dungeon, who are my go-to tanks? Who do I feel... Um, are the best tanks for what they bring to the table. And so I felt like the best uh, tanks, or the tanks that I tend to use most often when running particular dungeons, um, fell down to Yoko, Furnace, Krex, Overlord, and Stonefist. And it's kind of no surprise that you see almost one from every color there. So when we're running particular dungeons, um, it's not surprising uh, that there's kind of a, a bunch of them represented. The only ones that are not represented here are obviously uh, light. Um, as far as the worst tanks go, and uh, now this isn't a slight to them as far as tanks go. I mean, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. Uh, but obviously the worst, uh, Alex and Balog, those guys uh, fail pretty much across the board in most aspects, not uh, let alone just uh, tanking. Um, Leo, I did not feel, was a, a very good tank. Bramble, he technically is a tank, but uh, he's not really treated like a tank. I, I consider him more of a warrior than anything. And then uh, for a long time... Uh, um, harsh judgment against him. Uh, Phenol Toxin is, uh, is a pretty bad tank too. So I was always under the impression for the longest time that uh, he kind of failed across the board as far as tanks go. Now he has had a little bit uh, of a rework since he was converted to a monster. I haven't given him a, a fair shake since then. So um, 
He may or may not be good now, but uh, I'm still kind of uh, biased towards him. So let's get into the actual stats then and talk about who's uh, the best in each of the particular areas that uh, really matter. Um, I'm not going to cover every single one of the um, areas that I went through. Um, I just mentioned uh, before all the different ones that I covered. Uh, I won't cover the rankings in every single one of them because some of them are, are kind of negligible, so I, I'll leave those out. Um, so starting off with attack. So attack is important as a tank because obviously a tank's general role is to absorb damage and mitigate damage, but a tank who can actually attack as well is extremely potent. So what I was uh, kind of surprised by, but also kind of not surprised, is the number one was Femus. And uh, Femus, if you've ever used him, he can be an absolute beast as far as attacks go. Now I remember the only time I really ever needed to use him was there was a boss mode uh, dungeon that required him. And I remember his wild swing just absolutely obliterated guys. So he is uh, by far the highest attack uh, out of the... Uh, um, out of the tanks so it was uh, pretty impressive when I looked at his numbers uh, as far as uh, attacks go but his was his was quite a ways up there um, so definitely uh, worth looking into as far as if you need a tank uh, Femus can attack with the best of them um, one that I was kind of surprised at was Furnace now I never really pictured Furnace as an attacker I know everybody puts him as uh, hardcore attack runes in PvP and uh, that's 100% justified because he has the second highest attack out of anybody in the entire uh, tank spectrum so that's pretty uh, impressive there um, what I was also kind of surprised with uh, was towards the bottom Pygneus um, one of the worst as far as attacks go which I, I thought uh, that was kind of the case but uh, um, a lot of people just drag Pygneus along for his passives, but uh, if you're looking at an attack Pygneus, you're going about it all wrong. And then obviously uh, Alex at the bottom, that doesn't surprise me either. Um, Alex has been largely a failure since his implementation, and even after being a construct, he's kind of a failure as well. Next up, uh, defense. Number one defense. I was kind of surprised by this one, um, but that's only because I don't use him, and that's Kozar. Kozar's got the highest defense out of all the tanks. And then a close second behind him was actually Furnace, which was not surprising. And then uh, coming up in number three was actually Krex, who was pretty good. And then uh, worst as far as defense goes, um, I was a little surprised here. Yokozuna was the absolute worst. And uh, not surprising, Balog was down there too. Um, also not surprising was Phenol. Um, because like I said, Phenol, I, I attribute him as being one of the, the worst out there uh, for a long time. So it's not surprising that he had low defense. And for someone who, like I said, failed across the board as far as tanks go, if you have a low defense as a tank, uh, that's obviously not good for you as far as tanking is concerned. Next up, skill. Now skill I included in here just because it's one of the four core stats. Um, as far as what skill does for a tank, we just really don't know what that is yet other than critical. Um, so kind of take this one with a grain of salt. But skill um, is getting a rework. It is going to do some different things. We don't know exactly what it's going to do, but it is going to do more than just uh, critical. Um, it's going to have some other uh, passive type stuff as well. Largely healing at this point, but uh, we'll see what it does for basically everybody else outside of the healer class. Um, but as far as uh, skill goes, it's not surprising that Bramble is number one. He's got an extremely high skill, which raises his crit. Um, and again, Furnace, uh, number two. So you can see Furnace is already top of the list in three different categories. That makes uh, him look pretty promising at this point here. Um, as far as low skill goes, a um, couple guys at the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, Krex is down there. I thought Krex was a pretty good... Uh, uh, hero, but his skill is obviously not there. Stone Fist, not really much in the way of skill there either. So now what uh, some consider probably the most important stat uh, is health. The health pool for a tank has always been uh, one of those things. Now if you've played multiple games, there's always ongoing debate in terms of whether health pool or defense or damage mitigation is uh, more important. Um, I've always been a, a fan of health pool, and I don't want to get into that debate, but uh, I have a, a string of really solid arguments um, for specific games in terms of why I think health is better. But um, like I said, we're not going to get into that. So um, 
Number one in terms of health was Furnace. Uh, comparatively speaking to everybody else, Furnace was by and large way more than anybody else. Kozar also has very high health. And actually, uh, we got one shiny moment from Phenol here who has reasonably high health as well. Um, rounding out the bottom, uh, William. He's good at low levels, but uh, once you get him maxed out, he's just extremely underwhelming. Same with uh, Overlord. He's good at low levels and then ultimately uh, kind of you know fizzles away and then also not surprising is bramble uh, none of those goblins really have a ton of health uh, he's no exception so um, he's got pretty low health as well okay so next up is the first of the other types of uh, traits here resistances remember i said resistance is similar to that of defense in terms of it's going to lower some of the damage you take now what i was really looking for in terms of resistance is are there anybody that jump out that have a particularly high resistance in an area that nobody else has now i never really paid too much attention to resistance until uh, i did this but essentially every single hero has a base resistance against their current element which is their highest one and then they have a medium high resistance towards their strength element and then they all have a base resistance of five for spirit um, what i did notice though not any single one of these tanks actually has a resistance that is an outlier in that particular category so for example all of the water heroes have a 33 percent uh um resistance towards water there was no water hero that had more or less resistance than that to water same thing with their fire they all had 18 percent fire none of the water heroes had more than that none of them had less than that the only difference in these percentages are if you are not fully six starred up uh, but comparatively speaking they were all the same the difference was um, because when we look at the um, resistances you get 33 percent for your own element and then you get 18% for your um, element that's weak against you. And then you would have uh, zero resistance for the ones that are strong against you. So where that put us then is the light and dark heroes were actually missing one because their strength and weakness kind of canceled each other out. So they actually, uh, if you are a light or a dark hero your overall uh, composite resistances were actually less. So just uh, comparing all resistances, all light and dark heroes, they still had the exact same numbers as far as uh, comparing to each other, but they are ultimately lower than uh, the primary three colors. Okay, looking at availability of tokens. Availability of tokens is, uh, it's an important one as far as priority goes, and part of this uh, series is uh, which ones are gonna be the highest priority. We can't really include um, a highest priority list if we don't tell you who you can actually physically obtain really well. Um, so basically, uh, as far as availability goes, um, we have uh, Leo as number one. The reason being is you can get his tokens pretty much anywhere. And then after that, uh, Femus as well. Um, Femus can, uh, he's got uh, almost as many as anybody else in the game. So his tokens are everywhere. Um, so definitely go after him. Guys that uh, do not have availability are no surprise those legendary ones and the ones that are available in the heroic portal. So Igarok and Bramble. Um, Astrid, Furnace, Kozar, none of those guys have availability of tokens. It's unfortunate, but uh, that's how they are. Um, next up, Ascension costs. In terms of Ascension costs, I looked at uh, the rare Evos only. I don't care about any of the other Evos, just the rare ones. So in terms of uh, who's the easiest to ascend, uh, this also falls in line with priority. Um, it's no surprise that some of the lower and weaker heroes are actually the higher ones on the list so people like Stonefist, Femus, and William those are all guys that you can get uh, at one star very early in the game so it's no surprise that they have the lowest uh, cost um, as far as the highest cost it's actually Krex he stands alone uh, by himself and then shortly behind him is actually Furnace and then there's a whole host of guys uh, that are uh, right in the spot below that um, so as far as the Evo costs go, um, basically the most common value for Celestial Evos is 12 of them. So it requires 8 of one, 
two of another and then two of another over the two ascensions and that uh, is uh, reminiscent uh, over all these guys that have uh, rank number five okay um, next up I looked at uh, dedicated taunt so as far as tanks go you almost have to have a dedicated taunt now I noticed that uh, a lot of the tanks actually do have a dedicated taunt which is a good thing but there are a couple that actually stand above the others as far as uh, taunts go uh, the first up is uh, Krex Krex I gave him an extra point towards taunting because if he is paired with a Gorgon he gets a free taunt just by entering in the room doesn't require energy doesn't require cooldown doesn't require anything so as far as taunting goes um, Krex actually stands alone as the best physical taunter in the game um, so there's two other outliers that I actually saw here. They weren't uh, on the high end, but uh, um, a bunch of other ones all have uh, just a regular basic taunt or some version of a taunt, but it's a taunt nonetheless. Um, Astrid is kind of unique because she does not have a legitimate taunt, but she does have two different skills that provoke, which is basically a taunt, um, but it's not quite as good as a taunt. So I did give her higher points than somebody like Kozar, who basically stands alone as the only tank who does not have uh, basically a, a taunt. Astrid and Kozar are the only ones who do not have a taunt, period. Um, Kozar only has one provoking attack, Astrid has two. So um, those two are the worst as far as their actual tank responsibilities. Everybody else can mitigate and soak damage away from the party except for those two on a regular basis. So. Uh, keep that in mind as far as tanks go. In terms of the grand scheme of things, I did not uh, consider those points to be much different um, in the grand scheme of things, though. So I didn't uh, um, weight them extra heavily or anything like that. Um, next up, um, I'm skipping a couple of the, the lesser ones. Um, but basically, I, I weighted and considered things like uh, crowd control ability and support abilities and basically what this uh, related to is when they do their abilities do they have an option to basically crowd control um, the opponents and then as far as support with their abilities how beneficial to the entire team are those abilities so I, I did some uh, tinkering with those two there um, those I feel like might be the the most subjective ones um, so I'm not going to get into the actual rankings on those because I don't want to be uh, burned at the stake here by all the people that's saying this person is better than that person so I'm not going to cover the actual values there um, we're going to get into the last two that are actually uh, um, tangible so first up is speed um, as far as speed goes there's no such thing yet as a fast tank I would be, kind of be interested to see that uh, someday if there's a fast tank um, I don't know how the mechanics would work but pretty much every single one of the tanks is normal speed except for four of them so the ones that get penalized for being slow are Stonefist, Phenol, Femus, and Kozar everybody else is regular speed um, so they're not really penalized there and then lastly to round things up we have energy costs now energy cost uh, kind of pairs together with some of the other stuff in terms of who's actually going to be able to use their skills the most often and that's important as far as the tank goes um, because if you're able to uh, keep taunting or use your crowd control or if you have a self heal um, the best possible energy usage is going to give you an edge uh, when you're running uh, long dungeons or even better when you're running short dungeons and need those skills up on cooldown um, so as far as best energy cost um, you guessed it it's uh, furnace again partially because he actually only has two skills that require energy his uh, pressure release one isn't actually one that has a a cooldown um, so uh, keep that in mind as far as uh, considering furnace at the top but uh, I don't think many people are going to doubt that furnace is a, a good tank um, William is actually a, a very high one as far as energy cost goes as well so is Yoko that's particularly what makes those guys really good tanks early on because they can use their abilities uh, very frequently um, Yoko specifically when he was paired with uh, either Indigo or Echo um, he was basically an infinite energy tank so he was constantly dazing constantly healing and constantly taunting which makes him uh, extremely deadly as far as energy costs go 
Um, the worst possible uh, energy, uh, unfortunately, Kozar and Igarok, who are great attackers. It's just their skills are always on cooldown. Um, and then Leo. Leo's got pretty bad energy as well. So, And then there's a bunch of guys that are in the middle. So, Now, the grand uh, finale here. Basically, after we consider all these different aspects, where does everybody fall in terms of who's the best? Uh, who's the highest priority? Um, what should we consider for rankings? So first up, out of all of the things that I assessed, so the final results based on every single one of the categories and the weighting that I chose, remember I tried to be as fair as possible, the uh, number one tank was, uh, comparatively speaking, Furnace um, by uh, almost a landslide to everybody else, except for number two, which was Femus. Now, a lot of people wouldn't have expected Femus to be that great of a tank, but uh, the numbers don't lie, people, and he's uh, routinely in the uh, the top. And in, in fact, uh, him and Furnace are, are very equivalent through a lot of the different areas. Um, rounding out the top three was Kozar. Um, we saw that he was kind of low in a couple of areas, but uh, with uh, Kozar's high base stats and his, his good attack. He's actually uh, very high as far as uh, tanking statistics go. Um, down at the bottom, it's no surprise that we see uh, Alex and Balog both in the bottom five. Um, like I said, Balog kind of fails across the board. Alex fails across the board. Um, what was kind of surprising was Overlord Executive. He's uh, he was one of my favorite tanks, and he was actually my primary undead tank before I started using Hansuke. So it's uh, kind of surprising that he scored so low, but uh, um, he is a early, you know, an early hero. He's not one for end game content. Um, I was kind of surprised that William was so low as well because uh, um, a lot of people are using him at seventy in in uh, you know certain dungeons, and I see him even in PvP sometimes as well. Um, so it's kind of surprising that he's that low as well. So keeping in line with uh, some of the other ones, we're also going to take out some uh, some other stats and, and compare them as well. So this next list here is looking at just the core four stats. So we're looking at attack, defense, skill, and health. Um, rounding out the top three again, Furnace, Femus, and Kozar, exact same order, one, two, and three. And then... Uh, Rounding out the bottom, Leo, William, and Balog. So again, uh, the tops and bottoms uh, stay the same. The middles switch up a little bit, uh, but the top and bottom are largely the same. And then lastly, um, we have one that's uh, it's the core four stats, plus a few of the other ones that are important, um, like uh, ascension cost, availability, the energy cost, and I believe um, maybe the resistance one. I can't remember which one I did, um, but it was the core four stats plus four additional ones. So again, top three, Furnace, Femus, Kozar in that order again. And then uh, rounding out the bottom, Leo, Balog, and Pygnius. So Pygnius hadn't dropped down too far um, in any of the other ones, but now he's actually the absolute worst when we compared those uh, particular areas. Um, so he was actually uh, pretty low. And then uh, the other guys are still towards the bottom. Alex is still pretty low. William is uh, kind of bumped up to the middle now. But the top and bottom, again, stay pretty much the same, and the middle kind of shifts around a little bit. But what we can deduce from these three lists here the absolute best of the best as far as tanks, the ones that you want on your team, whether it be for dungeon running or even possibly for PvP. You want Furnace, you want Femus, you want Kozar. And then the only other person who was routinely in the top five was actually Krex. Um, so he rounds out the top four as far as best uh, tanks go. The worst of the worst, uh, Balog, no shocker there. He was the bottom of the barrel in two of them and second from the bottom in the third. Um, Leo was routinely in the bottom five of all of these. William was routinely in the bottom five of uh, two of these. And Overlord Executive was bottom uh, five in all three lists. So these guys are the worst of the worst as far as tanks. That's not to say that they don't have some usage. 
obviously, like I said, depending on your level progression, William and Overlord can be great tanks uh, early on uh, because of their relatively low energy use. Uh, you can get a lot of good use out of their skills. But once you get uh, further along in their games, their stats start to lag behind uh, a lot of the other guys, and then uh, things start to fall apart. So, um, one last little disclaimer about this particular video. After I went through and did all of the analysis, I did notice that there were a couple of instances where I may have been slightly off on some of the base stats. Now, when I did the base stats, I looked at just the base stats and then uh, disregarded anything with runes, disregarded anything with epics, and just looked at the base in order to uh, rank these. There were a few instances where... Um, people that I did not have six starred. For example, um, Furnace in one instance and Kozar in one instance because I don't have those guys six stars. Um, I accidentally used their five star rating rather than calculating out the six star. So some of those guys might have a slightly higher rank than what I gave them. Um, but in terms of the overall results, I don't think it was enough that it was going to push them drastically up or down. So I kind of kept it as it was. But um, if you're wondering why um, somebody is ranked so low in a particular area, keep in mind that it's possible that I consider their five star and not their six star. So before you go getting all gung ho about the comments saying that, oh, his attack is so much better than so and so or his defense is so much better than so and so. I keep in mind I might have a slight uh, error there, but their overall rankings are going to be probably within. A, a point or two of each other anyway so I don't uh, think it's gonna be a huge issue so with that said uh, that is going to wrap up this video here the next hero priority series is going to be the casters I have started on the analysis but what I'm ultimately looking at from you guys is what do you think it is about a caster that makes a caster a good caster so for example um, one of the things that I'm considering right now is AoE based attack so for example, um, do they have an AOE attack? How many of them do they have? Things like that. Um, so casters, obviously energy costs, um, total damage output, area of attack, stuff like that. Give me some ideas in terms of what you think are important aspects of casters, and then I will come up with an appropriate uh, weighting scale and point system to help uh, uh, assess them. But uh, that'll be uh, hopefully not uh, another four weeks, but uh, if it takes four weeks to get it out, uh, I apologize, but it's, uh, it's a lot of work uh, analyzing all these different skills. So got to cut me a little bit of slack there. But uh, until next time, uh, I guess uh, keep on keeping on. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting my channel. If you like this video, please show your continued support by hitting that like button. And be sure to check out both my YouTube channels for new content all the time. And always remember, peace is a lie. There's only passion. We'll see you next time.